Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. This is Night Cam reporter Tim Pamplin. We're in Redford. Coming up, we'll tell you about this Penske truck and the robbery that took place earlier. It's what was in the back of the Penske truck, chirping away the entire time they had police on this bad guy's tail. General Motors has big promises for the future, and it includes taking on Tesla. But first, the University of Michigan acknowledges more than 2,000 claims of abuse by former sports doctor Robert Anderson. We're glad you're with us tonight at 11. Off the top this evening, the revelation was made in a recent annual universe. Largest number of cases identified as abuse by the university thus far. Jason Colthorpe has been following this story and is here with a closer look at the numbers, starting with the number of reports, which doesn't mean the number of victims. Correct, Jason? That's exactly right, Kim. And it's important to note here that these are not new allegations. These were all reported in 2020 presumably by the people who have come forward, some publicly, some anonymously, anonymously thus far, but all who are suing the university. The University of Michigan's annual security and fire safety report saw a huge jump in sex crimes in 2020. But as the report explains, it's attributable to the complaints filed against Dr. Robert Anderson once the investigation went public. Of the 1,212 rape accusations, 1,194 were against Anderson. Of the 947 fondling complaints, 916 against Anderson, as well as one off-campus rape. The university saying tonight, these are 2,111 reports of abuse, not unique victims. Former football player John Vaughn, for example, filed multiple reports with the university of multiple instances of abuse as his recollections became clearer. You know, at first, you know, I remember three or four, and then it was 12, and then it was 15, and then it was 20, and then it was like, now I'm up to like somewhere between 45 and 50. The report also notes much of the reporting of Anderson's abuse was done through anonymous reporting platforms and used vague language, making it difficult to get exact numbers. The survivors who have come forward publicly thus far have been anything but vague. I expected nothing less than a positive outcome. Instead, I was savaged by this man's insatiable desire to do as he pleased while tears from my eyes streaked down my face from the pain he inflicted upon me. Jason, you talk about those vague reports. How much does the university think the numbers are skewed because of those vague reports? There's, well, I guess the short answer here, Kim, is they just don't know because if a report comes in vague and it's anonymous the university wasn't able to follow up with that person about where it happened when it happened or how many times it happened they also weren't able to follow up to see if reported cases were duplicated because the university offered several different platforms for people to report and if people want to go read this uh, for themselves the university does detail how it interpreted language within these reports and it's on the university of michigan's website for all to see right now kim Okay, we appreciate your reporting tonight, Jason. Thank you. Some breaking news right now. A federal judge has ordered Texas to suspend its controversial abortion law. An extraordinary development tonight. The judge sided with the Biden administration, which argued the restrictions go against the United States Constitution. The law bans women from getting an abortion after six weeks of pregnancy when heart activity can be detected. But that's before some women even know that they're pregnant. It was passed by the Republican-controlled legislature in Texas and upheld by the U.S. Supreme Court in September. Texas officials are likely to appeal the decision, so buckle in for quite a fight. Police around Metro Detroit were on the lookout tonight for a Penske truck carjacked at Wayne State University. But police were able to track the truck around town because of what was in the back. Tim Pamplin is on the scene with a night cam where police finally took the suspect into custody. Well, there is the Penske truck police have been looking for, stolen from Wayne State University. It's what's inside that vehicle that had police tracking it throughout the evening. It was chirping, sending out messages to the skies. The person who stole the vehicle had no idea what was in the back. We'll get to that in a second, but this is how it all went down. The vehicle was finally tracked coming down Grand River here. That's when the driver, the person who stole it, bailed ran and got tased by Redford police. Now, this is where technology helped law enforcement this evening. Inside the back of that Penske van, as this officer opens it up, there you go, 
a bunch of bird scooters just tweeting away back there, sending out their signal to the satellites. Police were following along. The driver bailed. You see the tyre marks here. He bailed out the passenger side. The vehicle came to rest back there. He ran over there, got tased by Redford, taken into custody. I'm being told the rightful owner, who's a, a local entrepreneur, spends his evenings gathering up the bird scooters, recharging them for the next day's service. He is here. He'll get his van back shortly. The suspect is going downtown. That is the scene in Redford tonight with the night cam. Tim Pamplin, Local 4. Easy scene. All right, Tim. A mother and father are charged with murder in the death of their 14-month-old son. Isaiah Porras and Amanda Jaju went before a judge today. Police found their son, Isaiah, dead at the Motel 6 on Grand River near Halstead in Farmington Hills on Sunday. Police say the 14-month-old had bruises all over his body. Prosecutors say Porus beat the baby and Jeju did nothing to stop him. They were living at the motel. Parents right now are being held without bond. The state has shut down an adult group home in Oakland County because they believe the people who live there are at risk of harm. The state ordered healthier, or excuse me, Heather Pines to close immediately. The adult foster care home is on Easton Road near Clarkston Road in Clarkston. There are 11 people living there now who are being relocated. We have calls into the state to try to find out more about the reason for this closure. General Motors making some very big promises about its future. The automaker announcing today it will double revenue in the next decade and pledging to unseat Tesla as the leader in electric vehicles. Mara McDonald live at the GM Tech Center in Warren where the company is on a, a two-day stretch of pitching investors with, as I said, big promises here, Mara. Devin, it was all batteries all the time today. New technology, new EVs, new commercial EVs as General Motors tries to position itself as just as much a tech company as a car company. Let me show you. Investors love to hear about how you're going to make the money and GM is making big promises. Out of the gate, it's promising to double its revenue to $280 billion by 2030. We have changed the world before and we're going to do it again. With electric vehicles, whether it's for a family or a fleet and the technology to go along with it. Our EV portfolio will be the best and broadest in the industry. Including commercial EV startup Bright Drop, GM will soon announce a second assembly plant for battery electric trucks. The electric GMC Hummer will be produced in Detroit at Hamtramck. The goal is to surpass Tesla as the US leader in EVs. GM understands that a convenient and robust charging experience is fundamental. Ultium Charge 360 is our solution that supports EV owners, dealers, and fleets. It integrates our mobile apps, charging networks, services, and products to deliver the best charging experience for GM EV owners at home, at work, or on the go. Back here live, Investor Days continues tomorrow at the Milford Proving Grounds where some of those investors are getting a chance to take some test drives. We're live in Warren tonight at the Tech Center. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Oh, looks pretty thrilling. All right, Mara. Michigan is marking a big vaccine milestone as coronavirus cases continue to trend in the wrong direction. Today, the state reported a two-day total of 7,674 new COVID cases. That's an average of 3,837 cases per day. Sadly, we've lost another 92 lives. A new NBC News tally shows there have been 44 million COVID cases in the United States since the start of the pandemic. Michigan says 10 million vaccine doses have now been given out to five and a half million people. More than 207,000 people have gotten a booster shot in the state. Republicans in the Michigan Senate have passed legislation that opponents say makes it harder to vote. The bill requires absentee voters to give their driver's license number, their state ID number, or the last four digits of their Social Security number. It would also mean changes for people who don't have a photo ID. They would have to get a provisional ballot and then verify their identity within six days of the election for their vote to count. If the bills reach Governor Whitmer's desk, she is certain it appears to veto them. Special night at Little Caesars Arena as the second gentleman of the United States welcomes 16 new U.S. citizens. Tonight's ceremony was held at the Pistons game. Douglas Imhoff welcomed the new American citizens after they took their oaths of allegiance. The citizenship candidates originate from 10 countries. That's cool.
great night. There are, uh, there are concerns about lead being in the drinking water in another Michigan city tonight. Where people are now being told to stop drinking tap water and start using bottled water. And they did not see this coming. Crews battling a big fire start running from what they're calling a smoke explosion. Here's Paul. Yeah, we had a cloud explosion today. There was lots of clouds around except in the thumb. Now, tomorrow morning for the kids heading to school, there'll be some patchy fog around, maybe a little drizzle with some of that fog, but basically cloudy and mild. And then in the afternoon, 76 degrees with maybe a scattered shower. But the shower chances increase later tomorrow into Friday. We'll talk about all of that straight ahead. All right, Paul, but first, a teen is in custody for a shooting at a school outside Dallas. What investigators say led to the 18-year-old opening fire in a classroom coming up.